morning, everybody. I am Father Jack Ward, pastor of St. Francis and Prince of Peace. And this is one of my favorite hobbies. In fact, it's my only hobby, which is model railroading. <coughs> and I drive Jaime crazy in the house because I blow the whistle on the train. And Deacon Jim is kind enough to come over and watch every now and then. And today he brought a very special guest star. And that guest star is Kirby, and Kirby's just laid down for his nap. Can we get a picture of Kirby? Calling Jim, see if he'll come over. Buddy, Kirby, come on, buddy. Come on, boy. Come on. Kirby, come on. Come on. Come on, Kirby. Come on over here. Come on. See There's my daddy. boy. Oh, boy. There's my boy. So who's Kirby, Deacon Jim? <laughs> Kirby is a retired racer. He's six years old. He raced for a number of years on the track. He won 33 of 80 races, came in first place. He's a real trooper. He has a hurt leg because of all that racing, but now he gets a pill like every other day, and now he's just fine. He likes to run, and we try to keep him from running because every time he does, he hurts his, his leg all over again. But he, that, that, if you could watch him run in my backyard, you would be really edified to see how graceful he is even over branches and tree limbs and all kinds of things. And he is just a beautiful specimen to watch. He's a great dog and he's a wonderful companion. It's really a lot of fun to watch him run. Once in a while when in between masses on Sunday, we'll bring Kirby in and let him run around the church. And it's hilarious to watch how every time he runs, he jumps. You know, he makes such a great jump every time he moves and yet he's as gentle as as a lamb he's as sweet as he can be do you like uncle jack yeah you're gonna come see uncle jack come on come see uncle jack come on come on see uncle jack come on see uncle jack you're just a good boy you're just a good boy you're a good boy yes you are yeah now you haven't met dinah yet who's my cat because she might eat the dogs so <laughs> <coughs> we keep Kirby and Thomas away from Dinah. But you're a good boy. All right, we're, we're going to listen to the gospel. You want to hear the gospel? You're going to pray with us like a good puppy? Okay. I'd like to share today's gospel with you, if, if you don't mind, just because I think what it says to us is particularly important. And this is from the Gospel of St. John. And I guess I should take my hat off when I read the scriptures. It's from the Gospel of St. John chapter 5 verses 1 through 17 sometime later Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish feasts now in Jerusalem by the sheep gate there is a pool that in Hebrew is called Bethesda it has five porticos and in these a number of invalids used to lie people who were blind lame and paralyzed waiting for the movement of the water for occasionally an angel of the Lord would come down into the pool and stir up the water. The first one into the pool after each such disturbance would be cured of whatever disease he had. A man who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and was aware that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to get well? The invalid answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am still on my way, someone else steps into the pool ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man was cured, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. Therefore the Jews said to the man who had been cured, Today is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He replied, The man who cured me said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you to take it up and walk? But the man who had been cured did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that Jesus was the man who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to harass Jesus, because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it sad that sometimes when somebody is trying to do something good, other people try to find fault with them? And that seems to be what's happening to Jesus here. He's being found having fault because he broke the rule of doing something good, which it required servile work, on the Sabbath. For Jesus, it wasn't really work. For Jesus, it was a good deed. And yet, in spite of the good deed that was done, because he allegedly broke a rule, the Pharisees were out to get him. Now, I think we sometimes are that way when we look at each other. We tend to be very critical. Even when someone does something good, we look for a way to make it not so good. We look for a way to find fault with it. We even see it in politics today. When something good is being done, we are all too quick to criticize it and say it's not the best way or it isn't the right way. I think Jesus is telling us here that we need to look for the good the good in the actions that we take, the good in the things that we do, and especially the good in each other, and not pay so much attention to what may obviously be wrong with each of us. May God bless you. Have a good day. And now I think we ought to hear from Deacon Jim, mm. since he's got Kirby all calmed down. Yeah. Well, good morning. As uh, Father Jack said, I'm Deacon Jim Sullivan with Prince of Peace and also St. Francis de Sales. This gospel has always been an interesting one for me. I've always enjoyed this gospel because it points out to us, I think, uh, the times in our lives we can really be selfish and thinking only of ourselves. The Jewish leadership at the time of Jesus had carved out a nice little lifestyle for themselves. And actually they were stealing from the temple. They were charging for sacrifices that really weren't done or not done properly. And when Jesus comes along and begins to gather some, you know, some speed and some followers, it gets to be a problem for them. They're worried that perhaps this real cushy lifestyle that they've, you know, garnered for themselves is going to be gone. And that's going to be a problem. So the first thing they can do is to attack Jesus. They come after him tooth and nail. He broke the Sabbath. He broke the law of the Lord that you shall not do work on the Sabbath. And they're out for blood. It's one of the ways they're trying to get rid of Jesus. Notice what Jesus does in this gospel. He disappears. He doesn't even give them a chance to confront him. They just He just walks away and he's going throughout the people that perhaps saw this and ministering to them. So not only did he minister to the poor guy who needed to walk, he's ministering with that miracle to those that are around, those who saw it, those who heard about it. And that, I think, is something that we can really try to do in our lives. It's not always easy. It's rather difficult at times to reach out to another person. But that's the message here. Jesus lets go of those who are trying to hurt him and goes to those who need him and that is our job as Christians, that is our job as Catholics, whether we're priests or deacons or just the ordinary person in the pew. We are all called to spread the word of Jesus to all. It is especially important in times like these where we have this terrible virus that is hanging over our heads and we're afraid to go out, we're afraid to stay in, we're afraid to do this, afraid not to do that. Now's the time we can reach out to people. Maybe not to go to their homes, but to pray for them, to know that they have support, and to say, keeping social distance the way it should be, smile, say hello, be kind, be gentle. Even though our hearts may be terrified, we can still offer the hope of the Lord Jesus to those around us. And I think if each one of us could do that once a week or once a month, can you imagine how many people can have their lives changed because we decided to follow Jesus and not the Pharisees.
we're gonna say goodbye with the best sound in the office, the sound of Father Jack's train. So. Hold on, it takes a minute to get the freight loaded. We're we're loading up the freight right now. In just a moment, there we go. Here it's coming. Here it goes. doesn't take much to keep me happy. So long. <laughs>